Hello everybody, this is Karma Killed the Cat, and welcome to your 13th Lua tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going over modules, which is the equivalent of C++ or C Sharp's namespace. And this might actually end up being another short tutorial, just like last tutorial, because there's really not too much to go over. But I think it is important to know this, because we will get a, be getting into the uh, libraries, like the I.O. library and the math library of Lua. And those are modules, so I think it's important to know what those actually are. So to start explaining modules, we're going to start with a function we're already pretty familiar with, the io.write function. And we're just going to put hello in as a parameter. So we haven't used it in a while, so if you don't remember, io.write is the same as print, it just doesn't automatically insert new lines at the end of the function, or the end of the string. So you can see that io.write isn't a normal function because it has the dot, which means that it's a member of a table. So what io.write is, is it's a function included in the io module. The io module is a module that's preloaded with all Lua files. You don't need to use the function we're about to go over to require it manually. All Lua files have it. But if you want to give it a different name, then we use a function called require. So we'll say require, and then as the parameters, we'll say io. And we set a variable to this, so we'll say i equals io. I probably shouldn't use i because it usually means iterator, but it doesn't matter right now. So now, if we say i.write, hello, we should get the exact same thing. So when we run this, it should say hello twice. Hello, hello. So what the require function does is it loads a special Lua file, which for this tutorial will be called module.lua. And that Lua file defines a table that can have functions or any other kind of value in it. And then at the end of the file, it will return the table it's being defined. So what the require function does is it sets the it sets the variable that uh, is taking the return value from require to that table. So uh, by default, the IO module is set to a variable called IO, so our IO table has write, it has read, and it has other functions that we'll get into when we have a tutorial on the IO library. And then we say I equals require IO, and really it is IO.lua. The require function just assumes that it has the dot .lua ending. So then it takes the IO table and it sets it to our I variable. So now we can say i.write, i.read, and any other function in the IO library. So in our module.lua file, we're going to create a simple module. It's just going to have a function or two in it and a few values, and then we're going to return that table. So let's just set, make our table m. I'm not sure why. Eh, we'll just leave it capitalized. So m equals empty table. So let's just make our first function count to 10. They don't need to be complicated functions it doesn't really matter. So we'll say function m dot count doesn't need any parameters and end. So we'll just say for i equals 0 10 do print i and end just counts to 10 and let's just have our other function do the classic example of printing hello. Sorry I'm not being very creative with my function examples. I just don't have any good ideas. So m.print end and we just print hello. So let's also set a few values. So we'll say m.10 equals 10 or not the word 10, 10, and that should be good. So now what we do is we return m. So now that our module is done, let's include it in our Lua tutorial file. So all we have to do is say, say m equals require, and in the parameters we give it module. We don't have to say dot Lua because all modules must be dot Lua files. So the require function assumes dot Lua. So don't write dot Lua. 
So now that we've included our module file, we let's call some of the functions from it. So we can say m.count, m.print, and then we can print m.10. So if we save this and save this and then run it from here, we get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, hello, and then the number 10. So this is another pretty short tutorial, pretty easy I think. Uh, this is really just another way to get information in one Lua file from another Lua file. Uh, modules are usually used like uh, include or using in C++ or C Sharp and they really most resemble namespaces from C Sharp. So these are most useful if you're writing some kind of library for Lua like say a graphics library. If you're making just a normal program or a game you probably won't use this much but since we are going to be getting into all the libraries like the IO uh, OS and other libraries. Those are modules, so I think it's important to know what these are. So that's all for this tutorial. Uh, again, I'm not sure what we're going to do next tutorial, but I'll think of something. So see you in the next tutorial.